what's happening. This is Joshua Bwetsi and you're watching Sports and Icons. Okay, so following the previous video with the UFC president Dana White saying boxes are overpaid, I just did that video and just uploaded it and whatever. But I've been thinking about it a little bit more and he should know better, shouldn't he? I mean, for him to say boxes are overpaid. Now, of course, he's thinking about Joshua. He's thinking about Canelo Alvarez. He's thinking Tyson Fury, Dylan White, Errol Spence Jr., Terence Crawford, these, and Javonta Davis. He's thinking about those kind of people. Okay, but unfortunately for him, he, he put every boxer in a bracket to say, you get paid way too much. Of course, listen, is that just his way of defending the fact that he doesn't pay his fighters nearly as much as what these other uh, boxers get? Even though apparently UFC is more popular than boxing in America. But yet boxers get paid more than UFC fighters. I'm pretty sure Dana White, he's probably got a very nice house or, or houses. So nice fancy cars and a very healthy bank balance. Do all these fighters have that? Probably not. Some of them will, of course. But the harsh reality of being a boxer is that there are hundreds and thousands of boxers out there, amateur and pro, who are never, ever going to make it. And some of them have got all the skill you could possibly answer for. They've got the punching power. They've got the dedication. They've got the heart. They've got the endurance. They've got everything to make it to the top. But they're probably not gonna. Reason being, money. They don't get paid that much money. Especially if they don't have a TV deal. But even then, you see, a lot of the fighters, especially the prospects who do have TV deals, what, do you think that they get paid thousands upon thousands every time they fight? No, not at all. Trust me, I know plenty of fighters who have TV deals. Plenty of them. And trust me, they don't get paid that much. They probably get paid a, a couple of grand. You could say, well, maybe they get sponsors. It's not that easy to get sponsors. It really isn't. Now, of course, you see some fighters with like 101 different um, company names on their shirts as they're walking to the ring. Each of those uh, sponsorships probably only pay them like 100 quid. And some of them would be just for that fight night. Some will be a month by month basis and things like that, of course. There's a different kind of sponsorships for different people. But there's so many boxers out there who have to work full time as well. Because obviously they have real life to deal with. They have families. They have bills to pay for, ha um, rent, mortgages. Got to put food on the table for their children. A lot of these boxers can't even afford to train properly because they've got to go to work. And they're tired. They've got to spend time with their children, with their wives. They, they don't have the time to always go to the gym. On fight night, most boxers have to pay their opponent. Now, I don't particularly like ticket deals. I really don't. But unfortunately, it's a necessary evil. It is. You see, a, a small hall promoter who's going to put on a show isn't going to do it out of the goodness of their heart. They're going to want to make a return on this. If you want to fight on our show... You have to sell so many tickets. And out of those tickets, you've got to pay your opponent. And whatever's left, I will get a cut of that and you will get, get, get a cut of the rest. But most, and I, and I do mean this, most boxers don't sell their allocation of tickets. Do you know why? Because nobody knows who they are. In their, in their home city, in their hometown, in their home street, people don't know who they are. No matter how good you are, people are not willing to give you £40 for a ticket because they have no interest in going to watch you box because you're not big on social media. You don't put yourself out there with several tweets per day, Instagram posts per day and Facebook and all these kind of stuff to build up a following. You don't get that. So in most cases... They have to pay their opponent just so they can fight. And they're paying their opponent out of their own pocket because sometimes they can't even sell enough tickets to pay their opponent and take a wage for themselves. Sometimes they can't even sell enough tickets just to pay for their opponent. So they have to put their hand into their own pocket to pay their opponent. Sometimes taking food out of the cupboards, if you like, to pay for their opponent. But boxers get paid too much money, according to Dana White. 
And how many fighters do you know that have had talent and look pretty good, but ended up retiring very, very early because they couldn't afford to do it anymore. They couldn't afford to be taking the time off work, to be spending time away from their family because it's, at least with working on a building site or working in a warehouse, a factory or a restaurant or whatever, at least that's guaranteed money, it's guaranteed steady income. Boxing ain't, and it's a dangerous sport. I mean, how many fighters out there do you know, former fighters, who are punch drunk? They can hardly string a sentence together. But they've been in big fights. And they don't have a penny to rub together at the end of it. How many fighters can you name? Look at, say, Riddick Bow. Apparently he's broke. Look at, say, Gary Sykes. Mental health problems and all that kind of thing. Again, he can hardly string a sentence together himself. Their management teams need looking at because they're throwing these uh, fellas in. Say, for example, Gary Sykes throwing him in with Luke Campbell and throwing him in with this fighter and that fighter. For, for how much money did they get for that? Not much. And they're paying for it now their career's over. In these kind of circumstances, I think they're trainers, their uh, managers, especially their managers and that, need looking into and having their licenses taken from them. And, it, and it's happening all around the world. All around the world. Too many managers out there just want to get paid. They, ha they don't have the welfare of the fighter in mind. Listen, it's very, very easy to find a manager. It's very easy. Does their manager earn their split, their cut, usually around 25%? Do managers earn that? No. Considering that a trainer who spends all day, every day with these fighters only gets 10%. But a manager will get a bigger cut. Why? Because the manager said yes to a fight or no to a fight. That's it. It's, it's, it's not hard being a manager. But you, you, they get paid a bigger split. And some of these managers will take money from their fighters regardless. Now, I know a few managers, quality managers like Mark Lazell like a Phil Jeffries and Matt Jobes and well there's quite a few okay who do not take not one penny from their fighters not one penny now don't get me wrong if they get to a certain point where they're starting to earn big money and good money and having big fights and that they're not then of course of course they're going to expect something back but in the beginning part they don't but there's too many managers out there who will take a cut regardless of, of, of how much it is whether that boxer walks out with 10 grand, they'll take a cut. If that boxer walks out with 50 quid, well, they'll, they'll take their, their cut of 50 quid. They'll take it, no matter what. Boxing is a very, very hard sport. Very, very hard sport. There's so much talent out there. Hundreds of thousands of professional boxers that you and I are never going to hear the names of. We're never going to hear them. Because they're not on TV. It's so difficult to get a TV deal. To get a TV deal, you have to be pretty popular. You do. And that's the unfortunate thing because not everybody is comfortable about putting themselves out there on social media. Now, don't get me wrong, of course, there's a lot of uh, fighters out there who don't have too much personality who do have TV deals. But again, that is down to, and again, the credit to certain managers who will go above and beyond. They will. And the TV platforms will look at them and go, okay, well, you've got something that we can work on or work with. But there's so many that will never, ever be given the opportunity. Just going for a run in the morning is taking time out of their day. Going for a run in the evening, going to the gym to hit a heavy bag. I mean, I know many, many fighters who have had fights and they didn't even spar in their training camp because they didn't have time to. I know many fighters who, on the night before the fight, had to pull out the fight because they didn't sell enough tickets. I know many fighters who did have fights on fight night and coming out negative because they had to pay their opponent. Being the away fighter is the easy part in some ways because you are guaranteed a set amount and, and it could be a grand, could be two or three grand. Again, yeah, even for small hall shows. So imagine how many tickets you've got to sell to pay your opponent and take a wage for yourself and give the promoter their money as well. 
it's not an easy life at all. So for Dana White to say that boxers are overpaid is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Now, I know some people say, well, maybe people like Anthony Joshua or Canelo Alvarez or Fury or whoever, maybe they should take less so there's more money for everybody else below them. Why? They ain't going to do that. Of course they ain't going to do that. And is that money going to be filtered down to the small hall shows? No. Do they care about small hall shows? No, of course not. Of course not. Now, don't get me wrong. Of course, you do have, say, Anthony Joshua. He does invest in the uh, amateur system. He does invest in up-and-coming boxers. He does. So does Canelo, and so do a lot of fighters, okay? Tyson Fury does um, on that as well. But they're not going to give a huge chunk of their money down there because, again, a lot of them came up through the hard way. You think Canelo Alvarez was born with a silver spoon in his mouth? No, he had to earn it. The money that he's earning right now, he had to earn it. He went through the small hall shows of not getting paid. Took fights that maybe he shouldn't have took in certain times. But he came through with flying colours. Same with Anthony Joshua. He went through the amateur system, went to the Olympics. He did all that. It wasn't just handed to him. He became world champion. Again, a lot of it, his popularity is the reason why he gets paid a lot of money. If you can sell, you get paid. It's very, very simple. It's not a complicated thing to work out. You will get paid what you generate. If you can only sell 10 tickets, then that's what your pay is going to be. If you can sell 50,000 tickets in a stadium and do 250,000 pay-per-view buys, you're going to get paid a whole lot more money, aren't you? That's how it works. Promoters are not just going to pay fighters millions upon millions for no reason and not seeing a return. So that's my point with Dana White. Boxing is a brutal, hard sport. Sponsorships, very, very difficult to get. And even then, it ain't much money. That's why so many people will never become a professional boxer. You're never going to hear about them. Many of us have walked into a gym as uh, kids and teenagers to try boxing. It's too hard. The realities of what a boxer has to go through outside the ring far outweighs what they have to do inside the ring. Fight night is actually the easy part. It's everything else. It's all the politics behind them. You've got people backstabbing them, getting robbed on the scorecards. Even in the amateurs, you see them blatantly get robbed. They're getting disheartened left, right and centre. Boxers don't get paid over overpaid. They don't. My thoughts, you drop me yours. Click thumbs up, subscribe. Catch you on the next video.